folks so you guys can tell from the video and the thumbnail obviously this is a video of how i painted my shark jacket so first of all, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Anderson Design Group for allowing me to use their design. So I first found their design on Pinterest and seeing that it was theirs, obviously, I have to give proper credits to them and ask permission if I could use it. So I emailed them and thankfully they gave me permission to use it under the sole fact that I'm selling this to donate the profit to a shark conservation organization for Save the Sharks Project, of course, and not for my own gain. So that's why they allowed me to use it. They initially didn't let me, but they said I could sell it, but I have to include their tagline and give them credits, which I am doing. So thank you so much to them for allowing me to use their designs. So I am all for informed permission, whatever you call it, but like rightful, giving rightful credits to the owners because that has happened to me more times than you can count. I used to be a basketball photographer and I used to take pictures of my friends. And I know they're my friends, but I did it for free, but they still couldn't give me credits when they posted it on social media. So it was really, really, mm, you know, like, mm. and also like one time I was watching New Hoka perform and I posted on my Instagram because I took pictures and this girl took it without permission and posted on her Instagram and she got a like from New Hope Reese, but I didn't. So that was hurtful because that was my picture and she didn't even give credits. How rude. That sounds like a meme. Don't be rude. Are you kidding me? If you guys are wondering why I used Anderson Design Group and didn't make my own, it's because darling, I don't have any originality. No, I do, but in this case, their design was perfect. It was so pretty. Like legit, I give credit to whoever their designer is. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Like, you know? Because <laughs> I've been scrolling pictures for so long for finding inspiration on how I should draw it. But I couldn't find anything except the one that I literally wanted to draw it like. That doesn't really make sense. I cannot articulate the sentences. I'm so sorry. And also my creativity levels are really, really low, especially in quarantine. Like I don't have inspiration from anything other than social media and social media is not the most reliable source of like inspiration, you know? <laughs> so in case you guys didn't know yet, but I explicitly mentioned it earlier without giving any further details, I am selling this jacket. If it's not already sold out by the time I upload this, because if it is already by then, I would be so happy. So this project is not very like part of like a massive campaign, but it's kind of my take on sustainable fashion because Continuing, in 10th grade, I was introduced to fast fashion and I didn't exactly know what it was before then. I have never even heard of it. It's like this industry, the fashion industry, where people keep on making new clothes and trendy clothes and selling it for a cheap price. But also it comes with the cost of not paying um, workers and people who actually work in the factories the proper wage that they should be receiving so they are severely underpaid large companies like H&M and Forever 21 they produce their clothes in like India or like I think China and they do it there because it's cheap labor and even with cheap labor they're still underpaying their workers which is why I've resorted to using sustainable fashion now I'm trying to reduce my fashion footprint and trying to thrift more and buying products from more sustainable fashion brands rather than fast fashion brands. There's a whole Netflix documentary about it. If you guys want to learn more, please do. It's really interesting. I thought I wouldn't be interested, but it's so cool to see like how small things like the clothes you wear can actually impact a large group of people, you know, like how something you buy may support this very unethical industry and I don't even want to go to a ramble about it, but do watch the Netflix documentary. I will link it below. All the jackets that I will be painting in this series, hopefully there's three of them. I bought three jackets are thrifted. They're all thrifted. They're all secondhand. I am selling this jacket and I am donating it to a shark conservation organization. If you guys do want to purchase this jacket, go on to my Instagram if it's not already sold yet. My, not my Instagram, save the sharks Instagram. It's right here. So you guys can purchase it there. So again, if you're purchasing this, you're supporting a good cause, you're helping to conserve sharks, and you're also getting a memento of what I made with Anderson Design Group's help. So yeah, let's get on to the video. So I've masking taped the sides because I'm a perfectionist, but also a mess 
so I really cannot do anything without masking tape or like protection on the sides so I put masking tape already now I just need to paint it white so if you guys don't already know it's always best if you start out with a solid white background so the colors you layer on top of it will pop more and it just makes it easier for you to paint so I personally always paint a layer of white on my fabric first if it's not already here, I'm just measuring out the dimensions of my painting space. So when it comes to sketching and basically doing art on any sort of fabric, I have a very particular method and because I'm using reference, I want to make sure that everything is proportional and unfortunately because I'm a perfectionist, it's hard to do so. Also, trying to sketch an erased pencil on painted surfaces is really just a pain. You can't use an eraser and you actually just have to paint over it because if you do try to erase it, all you get is a smudgy pencil mess. So yes, you guessed it folks, I'm going to be tracing on the sketch of the drawing. Is it cheating? Perhaps. Is it also efficient? Not really. But is it going to have the best result for someone, aka me, who can't draw for <laughs> Hell yeah. Here I'm measuring the length of the upper line, the length of the lower line, and this thing I like to call the perpendicular height, which is basically the length of the line from the middle point of the bottom line to the middle point of the upper line. This doesn't make a lot of sense, especially since I'm doing a voiceover, but hopefully the video will provide a visual aid so you guys can understand what I'm trying to say. I need these measurements because I'll actually be printing the reference picture to trace from and I need it to be proportional to the painting space I'm working on, so then I need to alter the image itself to fit set proportions. So the perpendicular height turned out to be much longer than an A4 paper, so here I'm just using a second piece of A4 paper, cutting out a section of it, and pasting it on my first piece of A4 paper just to essentially elongate the length of the paper. Again, this is so so tedious I don't even know why I chose to do it, but anyways. So instead of using regular paper, I'm using sketchbook paper here because it's a lot more durable, it's a lot more resistant to tears and wrinkles and just makes the whole tracing process a lot easier for me later on. So here I'm just printing out my reference image which size I already altered and I'm printing it on the altered piece of A4 paper that I made earlier. I'm printing it on grayscale just to save printer ink. You can do this with color if you want to, it really doesn't matter. So after removing the excess paper around my reference image, I am now doing the hard part of my copy and pasting thing which is basically what I'm doing here. Um, I am using some sort of exacto knife and I'm just like cutting out the outline of the shark. What I will do with this you will see later on. Okay, I need to listen to the Fuzzy Brain album. Okay, look at how hard I have to, like, there. I have to keep on going, like, jagged. It's so hard. So, um, yeah, if you guys don't know already, hope you guys know. I mean, like, most of you, hopefully, for now, are, like, good friends of mine. You all should know that, if you don't already, that I literally trace most of my drawings. Not, like, to actually get, like, the whole thing, like, um, I don't even know how to phrase it. I can't even articulate my words. How the hell? <laughs> no wonder I'm feeling I be English. Lol. <laughs> to do the underbody part. I almost said under boob. I don't even know how a shark has an under boob. Like, okay, Giselle. Nice. So I'm just gonna like skip ahead through this section because it was basically just me rambling about life at like 2 a.m. which none of you want to hear about and me just like talking to the camera about things I've already mentioned before. But to summarize basically everything I'm saying in this very sped up video of me rambling is so number one, stream Dayglo's album guys. He's so underrated and the whole album's a bop. Number two is me getting scared of getting copyrighted for singing to Diglo's album, which I know is kind of impossible because people literally do covers on YouTube for a living. And number three is me complaining about how hard of a time I'm having about having to cut this shark's underbody, even though I clearly brought this problem onto myself. Yay! So then I can trace like this on my jacket. So this part's rather self-explanatory, but what I'm doing here is just tracing on the reference image of my shark onto my painting space and making sure it's positioned nicely. 
So, this is what the final tracing product looks like. It's not the best, but at least you have the idea of like the proportions and how it's all gonna look. I think we're gonna stop here today and then we're just gonna continue this tomorrow. See you guys, good night. Hello, people. This time I'm going to show you guys how I trace in the details. It's a bit of an intricate process, so I may do a time lapse. If you can hear screaming, <laughs> it's my friends on Discord, they're playing CSGO. So I should probably show you guys that I have the reference picture up here so then I know which shade is like which so I don't get confused. So what I do next is I try to like trace out and like cut out the parts that are a sort of shade and yeah, it's really hard to explain it to you guys, but so I'm just gonna show it to you. Let's start here because we have the tail, so we have like a guideline. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this part right here and just go like brr. So we have this line that I'm gonna follow. It's like this jagged line. So I'm just gonna go like... Just this on its own looks really odd, but when I trace it on the shirt, uh, I mean on the jacket, it's gonna make a lot more sense. Let me just show you guys. And so what I do is I match it up, like right there, and then I just trace out the outside part. So I do this for like the majority of my artworks to see like which part needs shadowing or which part. And now, there's like the shadowing of the tail right there. And so then when I paint it in, it's gonna make like a lot more sense. Next up is this darker part of the shadowing here. So basically, I just continued the process of cutting out the highlights and the shadows of the shark for my reference image and then tracing it correspondingly on the outline of the shark that I had drawn on my jacket already. This process took me like a solid hour to do, so I'm just gonna speed up the time lapse even more for you guys so we don't waste a lot of time and just skip ahead to show you guys the final product slash sketch. So with that, I think the actual shark itself is sort of done. It's really, really messy because like there's parts that I couldn't trace, of course. So let's move on to the rest of the background. I'm gonna move forward by first um, lining up the original background thingy. And I'm just going to like see which layer, not layer, which like color of water is going to match up with the background. And then I'm just gonna make like a small line out of that and yeah. So now that we have our final like drawing, sketching thing, let's get started. Okay, so according to the reference picture, the darkest part of this water looks like green blue-ish. So I'm gonna use these two or and these two. So I think I made the perfect color-ish. I don't know if you guys can tell on camera, but it really does fit the actual color. So now it's just time for me to paint. Here's a life hack I do. I have this watercolor brush that I fill in with water. So every time I need to add water, I don't have to dip into my glass. I just go like flip, 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 extra flip. I mean, it's not like such a necessary life hack. It just makes life easier, you know? Hello, 
it's 11 p.m. and now I'm just gonna continue working on this because why not? You know, I at least want to finish the background today or maybe like some of the shark because the background is really complicated. See, it looks like that. And I don't know how I'm supposed to get this effect because the color of these dark spots are supposed to match these second one and like, yeah. So let's try our best. So as you guys can see here, I am painting over the top layer of the water because this paint oxidizes and turns into a darker color when it's dried. So the mistake I made here was undermining how dark it was going to dry. So then it turned the same color as my middle layer of water so I had to repaint it with a much lighter shade of blue. Also, I'm sorry for skipping ahead because I forgot to document the part where I detailed the top layer of water. So here I'm just adding the sun rays that are piercing through the water and to do this, I just added some very diluted white paint with one brush and I blended that with a separate dry brush to create a translucent effect. Hey guys, so I'm sorry I forgot to like video the stop motion for when I painted these but basically I just followed like the same techniques I added in like several waves and I added the small like sunlight the waves. I haven't added the yellow yellow things though. I did sun rays even though they're not very well blended. They're still like... I mean they're not the best but obviously it's like it's getting somewhere. But yeah, I think it looks okay so far. Then I worked on the shark coloring within the lines I drew like I did for the rest of the artwork. I'm sorry for speeding up this documentation but I'm doing it so the video won't be too long. Just have to add in like the sun thingies and like the light yellow brightness things. Moving on, I continued by adding random sea creatures on the coral area of the artwork. So for this, I went on to vectorstock.com and searched up keywords like sea animals, marine life, underwater life, etc. and took inspiration from there. So here is the final product. I'm so sorry for the bad shadowing. I'm trying to use two phones to bounce out the torch. But I added a little seashell and this little turtle. I added some details and on some details on the jellyfish too. So now I just need to apply varnish and I'm gonna do some peel poured for you guys. The moment you've all been waiting for. Whoa. Actually, let's try. Uh. Ah, yay. 
Okay, so the problem we have right now is that I can't use like a sticker like print label, so I have to do it manually. 